question on Canada is um, how social media and all the elements of that fit into um, wider marketing. And if you're a, a travel company or a tourist board, how you in, um, use social media and invest in social media and, and put it into your marketing campaigns, both online and offline. I'm very pleased to say we've got a very strong panel to talk about this today. Um, uh, starting from uh, your right, we have um, Alison Whiteman from Virgin Atlantic. Now, Alison has been head of e-business at the airline for five years and looks after a number of areas of marketing, inclu including the global web channel, mobile, social media, and uh, database marketing as well. And uh, she's responsible for leading the, the growth strategy for, for digital channels, customer relationship, and database management. Sitting next to her is um, Brian Hart from Tourism Island. Um, we've asked him here because... Um, his uh, Tourism Island has produced some, um, some very good uh, integrated campaigns, things like, um, you know, using things like My Irish 140. I don't know if you've seen that Twitter campaign, but that sort of fits into the general Discover Island uh, marketing campaign. And then uh, finally, at the end, we have uh, Justin Cook, who um, you know, was a, an early leader, I think, in, in digital, in setting up Fortune Cookie, the, a very, very well-known digital agency. That was back in 1997 and is now one of the most respected digital agencies in the world and one of its fastest growing as well, having talked to him recently about all the expansion plans you've got in different areas. Um, and worked with some uh, very big companies on on their integrated marketing campaigns. Um, I'm going to ask each of them to to have a have a quick talk um, about their campaigns, how they fit fit uh, social media into all of that. I'm sure, you'll find it interesting. And then we'll have some time to talk afterwards about any particular questions that you have. So, if um, if I could ask Brian to come and talk, he's going to. Um, he wants to sit up from the table because it's a bit low. He said from yesterday, so he just wants to be a bit more relaxed about it. So, thanks, Brian. Thank you very much for the invitation, Mark, to, to speak. Um, so Tourism Ireland, we are the DMO, the Destination Man Management Organisation for the island of Ireland. So we're responsible for marketing the island of Ireland as a, as a, a holiday destination. Uh, we take a customer engagement uh, marketing approach because we don't do the transaction, uh, so we don't uh, sell anything. Uh, so we take a long-term view of the customer relationship. We try to, um, one, acquire somebody's interest and then uh, keep a, a fire under that over a, a period of time and then keep tactical campaigns going. Uh, principally in spring uh, around St. Patrick's Day and also in uh, September, October time, uh, again, when people are beginning their planning for the, the, the following year. But equally, there, there may be campaigns going uh, throughout the year. Um, my own area is responsible for customer engagement and e-marketing, so the uh, website discoverisland.com comes into us. We also put together a lot of the structures and services uh, that support our social media activities, although there's extensive work that, that we do with our market colleagues uh, in different market offices uh, around the world. Uh, we run also the CRM system, uh, which we call the Customer Engagement Marketing System. Uh, we run uh, the email marketing activity, the contact center, and, uh, and various other pieces as well. So uh, quite a lot in terms of the digital space and also, so I, I talk about it as saying that it's, it's where technology and marketing meet the customer interaction. Uh, in terms of social media, we have about uh, 30 uh, different social presences. Uh, so we've taken a slightly different approach to a lot of other organizations in that we have atomized our, our presences. So we have a presence in a market. So we've uh, Dis uh, Discover Ireland GB is our Facebook presence. Uh, dis uh, so uh, Indeca Irland in, in Germany, Discovery Irlanda in Spain and so on. So we have uh, about 18 different uh, Facebook presences, eight Twitter streams uh, and uh, a couple of YouTube channels and uh, and uh, blogs as well. So we maintain a, a blog two to three times a week in English and about once a week in Spanish, Italian and uh, French. So a fairly extensive uh, footprint and I think you know, what uh, that has also resulted in you know, quite a amount of attention that, that is on it. So we have about uh, 525,000 uh, Facebook uh, fans, about 30,000 uh, followers. Uh, our colleagues in, in Visit Britain, our uh, colleagues stroke competitors in Visit Britain have about 45,000 in Twitter, uh, and they, we are neck and neck with them in, in terms of uh, fans in Facebook, so we have a, a good uh, friendly, uh, friendly rivalry. And I think uh, you know, kind of the, one of the key uh, tenets of, of what we have in social is, is, that, uh, is, is that social is now fundamental as a business process for us. 
So I have this, this concept where we have our website, our e email, and our CRM system, and we have our campaign activity across the top, but slotted in between that is our social media activity. And so a very significant number of our, of our uh, digital campaigns uh, exist as Facebook applications. So they, they take advantage of, they're, they're deployed in as, as Facebook apps. They do data capture, they're connected back into, the, uh, into our CRM system, and uh, they, so they run competitions and so on. So, uh, so we, again, social, social media is, is fundamental. We've changed quite a, quite a lot about our organization in order to do this. So we've changed uh, some uh, roles. So, so social media is inserted as, as part of people's uh, job titles, uh, or sorry, job descriptions. Um, we have done a lot of training, social media for managers, social media for operations, because we have different market offices with different staff doing different things. Uh, we have obviously got, we've got a social media project coordinator to assemble different services. We repurposed a, a significant part of our contact center to provide social media supports, so a cus customer service supports in social, so both in Twitter and, and in Facebook. And we'll do that in multiple languages, so in, in all of the languages that we support, so we support about different, six different languages. Um, we obviously do a fair bit of uh, Facebook advertising in support of this as well, and uh, we find that um, we have a, quite a particular target market in each of our, uh, each of our different markets, and, and we find that, that the demographic that we can get through Facebook advertising is really quite remarkably uh, spot on. It's, it, uh, if we look at the demographics of our Facebook pages, it's, it's, uh, it's almost identical to what we would set out at the start of the year as, a, as our target audience. Uh, and also then, a kind of like a final thing is, is that, and I probably really should have mentioned it at the top, is, is that we have uh, social as an organizational KPI. So this year it's a fairly blunt instrument in that it's the number of Facebook fans, but we're moving it into um, uh, other measures that are more about not just scale, but also the depth of activity uh, that we have. So that's the kind of the, the social layer, and um, because the, the title of this uh, session is, is really about where um, social fits in with uh, marketing activities. And I think one of the areas that um, is kind of really uh, apparent is, is that the, uh, the, the word of mouth area is now... Uh, Historically, word of mouth was always important, and as marketers, we knew that it was important. But we went about our marketing as if as if it didn't exist, and uh, and it's, but it's always been a bit of a sort of like this this the dark matter in the universe, and we couldn't we couldn't really see it and couldn't really feel it. But now we can obviously see it, and we can in, in, uh, interact with it and, and begin to understand it. And uh, so we've made a, a statement that word of mouth is central to everything that we do, and social media obviously is a very good vector for for uh, for word of mouth. It's not the only vector and obviously the water cooler is as still as strong as it ever was uh, but it, it, it this allows us to, to to take a look at it so what we're trying to do now is is say well okay well uh, yes social is the, is this tool it is this vector to to get this word of mouth out well how can we uh, allow this to complement uh, our other marketing activities and I would say that, that our, our, you know, we've, we've come for effectively from 2,000 fans at the start of 2010 to half a million now. Uh, we have built social up uh, either in, not quite in isolation, but largely within a digital environment. So we cross-reference with our email marketing, cross-reference with our website, but less so with our other activities. And some of the, some good examples, I think we have, uh, you mentioned uh, My Irish 140, which was a, a Twitter campaign that, uh, that we did here in Britain. And um, my colleague Sarah Rogers is here and she can take uh, a lot of the credit for that. Uh, the My Irish 140 campaign was a digital campaign. Uh, it was a Twitter-based, uh, obviously, get the 140. Uh, people had to post what uh, made them Irish and if it was, if it was uh, spuds or tater crisps or whatever it was, then that's fine. Uh, anything can make you Irish during the 140 hours. Uh, and we had a little bit of a success there in that um, the Alan, Alan Sugar picked it up and tweeted about it as well. So his 210,000 fans at the time uh, got, got to hear about it. So the, there was some, an interesting success, but it was also interesting to see the integration of PR uh, as well as uh, website activity, as well as uh, email, as well as uh, Twitter activity. So what we're trying to do is, is obviously uh, capitalise on the fact that, that the peer-to-peer -peer relationship is a, very, is, is a dominant uh, force in, in the travel decision and to take advantage of that. And we're now trying to reach above the top of the funnel because, again, our research tells us that the destination decision is one of the first decisions that is made when somebody goes about planning their holiday. So it's, it's almost too late if somebody uh, is searching for Ireland, um, it's, it's almost too late. We have uh, effectively the job is in part done. Obviously, we can help move people into active planning and, and help people introduce people to our industry. But uh, again, what we're about is trying to fill that funnel. So we need to reach beyond that. 
And I think uh, social, particularly in the word of mouth space, allows us uh, an element of that, which is, uh, so obviously if we have our fi uh, 500,000 Facebook fans, the, the first generation of, uh, of their friends reaches about 70 million people. So what we have seen uh, is our uh, post impressions, in other words, the number of people with an opportunity to view our Facebook posts is growing steadily as we grow our audience and as we maintain the, the level of engagement. And so we're at about now, last month it was about 10 and a half million post impressions. And that's very interesting for us because you know, our, our, our page views on our site are about three and a half million in a month. So it means that uh, in the course of 18 months, we have built up a, a, a piece of activity that is at least comparable in scale to the, 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 the primary website and it has the potential to, to grow in significance uh, even further. And I guess a final area where we're trying to use, um, uh, use social is as at the heart of all of our campaign activity. And again, historically within digital media, if we were buying, uh, buying an, an audience, we'd build a microsite and we'd bring people through to it for a campaign for about four weeks, and then the, the microsite would stay static and you'd do data capture and people would enter competition, that, that'd be it, that'd be done. Uh, but with a social media uh, campaign, you're, you're obviously acquiring audience. Uh, they like your page and, and so on, and they enter the competition. Uh, uh, but uh, minus churn, they will be there for the, the next competition that you run. So cumulatively, you're building up the reach of your campaign activity so that the next time you can uh, uh, amortize the benefit of the previous campaign across future campaigns. So in terms of integrating with, with wider activity, I'd say that we have largely built it up in the digital and, um, and email space. Uh, we are integrating a little bit now with uh, uh, other campaigns, but I think with the campaign for the start of, of next year, we're going to see, uh, I think, good use of the, the new Facebook announcements from F8, the Open Graph. And uh, we, we're going to be integrating that more, more closely with our website. So that's kind of a bit of our context. I've got obviously more examples and so on that we can talk about. I can obviously hand over now to Alison. Sure. Given that um, um, you know, some people might have specific questions about uh, what, you, what you've just talked about, sure. um, maybe if anybody had any questions, they might want to ask them now. But uh, um, I, I did give everyone five minutes to speak, but obviously uh, with uh, his speed of speech there, I think he had about ten minutes there. <laughs> oh, <sorry. Yeah. laughs> no, I'm not, not, not joking. Yeah. Anyway. But uh, I, I just had um, a couple of questions. How sure. do you actually measure success? Um, uh, is it across the whole... Uh, broad range of campaigns that you're doing across every sort of media and marketing tool? So at, at a at organizational level, obviously we don't do the transactions, so therefore we look at the promotable visitors that come into Ireland. So at an organizational level, if, um, if we see good numbers coming in, uh, we're lauded, and if not, uh, we're uh, castigated. So, uh, but drilling down into um, digital media, into social uh, success in, in, very, in very often terms, it, we're, we're doing it relative to other campaigns. Uh, so we're establishing our own internal benchmarks for what success looks like because effectively our environment is quite different to other, other, other uh, companies' activity. So we have internal measures for, say, the cost of acquisition of a new fan. Um, where so we're getting fans for about uh, one euro, so it's about 85 pence. Um, if we don't incentivize, if we do incentivize, it's about um, 65, 70 cents. So we get a measure, measure there. Uh, we also have KPIs at a market level for the acquisition of Facebook fans. And so if we're contributing to that and we can do that within, within budget, then again, that's a measure of success. But that's growing the audience. It's not saying anything about what that audience is then doing for us and how they're interacting with us. So we're looking at engagement more and more now. So we've got a, a couple of measurement activities where we're looking at churn. So with the, the, the people that we add, the people that we lose, and we've tried to correlate that with uh, other factors. And we found a very direct correlation between engagement and the acquisition and loss of fans. So the more engagement you have, the, uh, the, less, fan, the, the less loss you, you have over a period, which is obviously great because it means that you, you, you're, kind of, you're, you're acquiring fans and you're losing them at a, at a, at a slower rate. So uh, they, and we stay in net organic growth pretty much all of, all of the time as a result. And uh, so, so that, that's in, uh, beginning to look at engagement. And so next year what we're doing is we're, we're implementing a measure called a social equivalent advertising value. 
and we're effectively um, creating the uh, or analysing the different interactions that a consumer can have with it, with our social presence and creating a, a, a measure against other digital media activity. So whether it's an email that we send, the cost per email, uh, a click through to our site it would be equivalent to um, a Google click through, and so on. So we look at the other digital media uh, activity and then roll that into a cost and create a an equivalent advertising value. And what that'll do, hopefully for us, is it, it, it'll allow us to place um, a quasi-commercial value on it. Uh, so we can say if, if, if a market manager has um, 10 grand to spend, whether she would spend it on, um, on social or email or whatever. Uh, equally, um, the, uh, the, so it would, it's a measure of scale, but it's also a measure of the, the volume of activity that is coming through to it. Mm -hmm. So how, how would you actually uh, quantify um, an extra follower on Twitter for Discover Ireland? Would, how much would that be worth to you? Uh, it depends on what they will do for us, and we don't have a we don't have a monetary value on that yet. Uh, but and I would also say that that we haven't really cracked Twitter yet. I mean, we have our thirty thousand followers, but really it hasn't. It, the, the main focus of Twitter for us is in customer service. So we have we're monitoring that all of the time to uh, to look for actionable events which where we can help people out. So really, that that is our primary focus. Uh, nevertheless, we've had a couple of successes like my Irish one forty. We've had a couple of areas that didn't go so great. So we tried uh, when the downturn really kicked in, we tried an Ireland deals site, a bit like the, uh, you know, the Dell outlet model, but uh, we didn't have an efficient way of driving th traffic through to the, the stream. Uh, Twitter didn't have its, its model at the time, so we didn't have that value, uh, and we don't have that value yet. Okay. Now, are there any questions from the audience uh, to ask Brian? I'm sure there will be. I know there are lots of uh, DMOs in the audience who perhaps want to quiz him about how that's done. No? Um, Maybe I could ask you know, the DMOs in, in, in the audience then, um, how many of you are, are, are looking at social media in an integrated way with everything else that you do? Or are you just saying, we need to do something about social media, so we'll do that on one side, and then putting that difficult decision on how you integrate it into the rest of your marketing mix until later? Um, who, who's integrating into everything else they're doing? Would you mind? Um, Um, from an agency perspective, we're trying to very much incorporate the social media side of things from a 360 integrated approach. However, it's making that choice of whether or not it's the right channel to use or not the right channel to use. And, and it's seeing from a client's perspective an awful lot of nervousness about where how the control levels are put in place and also how the ROI on the investment is actually going to be working for us. So that's where we're coming from, really. I think the, the ROA question is, is absolutely valid, and I don't think anybody has cracked it. And we're, so we're obviously, we're attempting that with the SEAV. Uh, the, uh, the, the question about nervousness and control and so on, um, personally, I think the minute you're interacting in social, you're losing control. It's, you're taking part in a conversation that is in somebody else's space. And you have to sign up to that if you're, if you're doing it. And uh, you, you need to put in place in, uh, community management principles that will allow that to be managed. Um, and so we have a, a set of guidelines that allow um, teams to um, interact uh, in, in context. And we've had a few hairy moments, obviously, uh, but I think we've managed them pretty well. And, uh, but you need to have that process in place and just accept that it's going to happen. Any other questions? Just want to say who you are before you speak as well. Ian Burbeck from Projects Abroad. I was just wondering um, if, when you get people to your Facebook or your Twitter, is is an aim to get those people to the Discover Ireland website, or does it is it to get an email address to put them on a on a database, or or, or does it does it vary really? It, it, it does vary. Um, so in our, in our apps, when we're running competitions and so on, very often there's a, an explicit data capture element. And the aim of that is obviously is to get people into our CRM database and, and we can market to them. Uh, it, but we view Facebook as an end in itself and to a degree in that uh, the conversation is happening all of the time. And if you have uh, a good population of people who have been to Ireland with a population of people who are thinking about coming to Ireland, the, the, uh, the conversation really works for us. So, uh, and it, and it, it works in a more powerful way than, uh, you know, historically tourist boards have been very glossy and a bit boring. And uh, we've, we're, if we hand over part of the conversation to our audience, and obviously we, we facilitate it and add heat to it and so on, uh, that, that, that you know, I view that as our role, but also I view that it has an end in itself. 
In terms of the quantity of click-throughs, it's not an explicit aim for us to get traffic through to discoverireland.com uh, because, again, you know, we're not transaction-oriented. So, therefore, the uh, community management piece, the, uh, the, the, the motivational piece around our brand is, in fact, uh, a, a very solid objective of, of ours in any case. Uh, ideally, also, you know, when, as we move people into active planning, that's great. Uh, we bring th people through to the trip planning tools and so on into our, into our site. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I think our social presence would become quite a boring presence if we exclusively ended everything with a trip to discoverireland.com. Uh, and we've had some very interesting posts that, of videos and photographs and so on that have ge engendered a huge amount of very benign interaction uh, that really work in our favour um, just within, within Facebook itself. So I view uh, Facebook as, as being a, a, a platform in its own right with its own value. Thanks, Brian. Um, now, um, if we just moved on now to Alison, if that's okay. Um, now, Virgin Atlantic has um, a very passionate uh, social media evangelist at its head in the shape of Richard Branson, a very um, prolific tweeter, and he always claims that his tweets are his own as well. I'm sure they are. Yeah. Um, and, and, but I'm sure Virgin has a really interesting story to tell, so over to Alison. Well, just picking up on uh, what we were just talking about, we haven't atomised our social channels yet, and that makes me feel a bit ill listening to how many you've got to manage. Um, uh, but it's something we would consider, obviously, being a global brand because we've got um, lots of regional destinations and therefore we need to consider it at some point, if only to deal with the language factor. Um, our social audience is predominantly organic growth to date, so there's lots more opportunity to add social into the marketing mix, mix much deeper than we currently are. But um, just a few points I wanted to cover off with you. So we, we do have an ambition to be a social brand, not least led by Richard uh, and his guidance. He recently visited us actually at our offices and seemed to be more up to date with what was happening on Twitter than the uh, social media manager that was in the room. So uh, he'd definitely been watching what's going on in his brands the night before. So he was well aware of a, an incident that we'd had on there. Um, but we believe we need to actively listen in the first place and, and respond to what people care about and demonstrate social behaviours that are transparent and honest and authentic. So that's our positioning. And we want to do stuff that's a win-win. So we want to really talk about what the community needs, not just what the brand wants to talk about. So we're very focused on those three areas and we've done quite a bit of work on a B2C strategy so far, uh, which has three pillars, simply to serve, to sell and to socialise. So they're the three areas we're focusing on. Mainly a lot of the work that you'll see we've done to date has been on serve for the reason that that has most value to the community. Um, and we've done some socialising uh, as well with shout outs and competitions and involving our fans and followers in events that we're having. And we've got some work to do yet about what we mean by selling because we're not talking about hard sell, we're talking about very soft sell. And one day we want to be able to reach out beyond the channels that we own within social, so our uh, owned media, if you like, and actually get out to uh, niche sites, things like you know, um, say a kite, kite surfing website, for example, um, where customers are talking about, you know, their next holiday for kite surfing or whatever. And did you know Virgin Atlantic has a, you know, free sports equipment? So that, that's our, our vision for where we want to get to. But we've, we've got some way to go with that, obviously. Um, and it's all about involvement for us. So, you know, we did a campaign recently around called Red Hot Reporter. And basically that was about, you know, taking uh, an influential blogger and actually instead of us going to our party in Miami saying, uh, m tweeting and blogging about what great time we'd had, we actually took an influential blogger and, and got them to do it on our behalf and that went down really well. So it, it's about taking part. Um, in terms of the numbers, I guess, from uh, our, the research that we've done, about 65% of the people who are following us want to stay close to the brand. About 55% want information on offers or deals. And about 20% are with us um, to find out about service information. And, and by uh, above all else, as I say so far, the largest amount of um, responding that we're doing in the channel is around service. So despite the fact it's not necessarily what the community want, that's where most of the activity is. Uh, and it's a great platform by which to be seen to be um, 
actually responding to customers and doing something about their wishes played out in the public domain, which in itself is a fabulous PR tool. So it's not the fact that you're getting negative complaints, it's about how you deal with them that's most important. Um, so, yeah, so, so, so for us, yeah, the, there's lots going on at the moment. In terms of organisation, we are right in the midst of a let's reorganise social again. We started off three years ago uh, and we had, it was a bit of a scary thing as, you know, many brands are still at that point where they haven't started yet. We, we put together a social spaces forum with lots of different people from around the business. So it included uh, PR, business, product, marketing, um, e-business um, is what I meant, sorry. Um, IT governance, HR, the list went on, it was a cast of thousands. But what was really good about it is we used those sessions initially to kind of hold hands and deal with the issue face on ourselves and go, well, what does this mean? You know, because the, the minute you set off, you're like, oh, God, we better delete that post, you know, and they're like, oh, no, we can't do that. We need to be open and transparent. So by having a group of people tackling the problem in the first instance, we were able firstly to educate ourselves by bringing in speakers and regularly meeting uh, and getting up to speed on the area, but also making a joint decision and particularly thinking about the impact of the brand at the same time as we're doing it. There's no doubt about the fact there's no, there's no guru in this area yet because it's all new stuff. Um, so we are looking at how we're uh, organising social at the moment. So far, we've invested kind of zero money and about three heads. Um, so we're looking to grow that because we see the potential from the work that we've done so far. So we'll be looking to further invest in that during next year because um, we see it as a great opportunity and, and certainly a, a game changer for the industry. Thank you, Alison. Um, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Brian. How, how do you measure success? I mean, you're obviously a little different um, in that, you know, you are wanting transactions on, you know, virginatlantic.com, want people to buy airline seats. Is that the ultimate measure of success for you? More tickets sold? Uh, we're obviously um, following the growth of our audiences, but as I say so far, the activity has been mostly organic growth and we haven't gone out there to specifically do campaigns to do that yet. Um, we are interested in transactions, yeah, and we've got hard, we're, we're tracking every revenue generating link that we put out on social. Um, and we, we've seen about £150,000 over the last nine months. So um, we do have a high ticket value there, obviously, so it's, it's not massive. But um, obviously, as I said before, we're focused primarily on service at the moment with the resources that we've got. Uh, and I think we'd look to grow that more in the future for sure. And are you looking at um, attribution marketing at all in finding out which element of, of your campaign has actually delivered that, you know, the last click that we're talking about, the last click on your website? Are you trying to do that? I know it's sort of uh, quite early, early stages for that sort of thing with some companies. Uh, we are quite progressed with that, I'd say. We've been using, um, I, I could talk for a good hour on this subject. Don't get me started on attribution modelling. Um, yeah, we have been, uh, we've been using Tagman for a couple of years. Uh, great product, and with that, it's a container tag. And if there's any brands out there that don't have a container tag between now and um, the cookie law change next year, then good luck to you. Um, we basically are looking at, uh, as a result of using Tagman, we are looking at how the... Uh, online and offline campaigns, we're, doing, we're using two things, basically attribution modelling, where we're looking at the reports that Tagman is giving us to, to see in the you know, exposure to conversion within the whole thing, including social. Uh, and we are also using econometrics, which is a model, a statistical model that enables us to add offline weather, BA sale or whatever else is going on into the mix and actually uh, assess whether what were the drivers of the um, revenues that are coming in. So, yes, we're using both those things. It is still early stages on the uh, exposure to conversion work, but uh, we're quite hopeful that it's going to move from being at that's interesting to, wow, we better change our media spend in a specific direction. And could, for the people in the audience who don't know what that is, can you explain about uh, container tags and, the, and cookies? Mm -hmm. uh, so... Um, Many websites have got hundreds of campaigns running at any sort of time with lots of different partners. Obviously, usually, uh, if you're a, if you're 
a website with a shopping basket where you check out of some description, then you'll ha probably have hundreds of tags on that last page just capturing all of the information that you need. Obviously, with the privacy law changing next year, if it does go ahead in its current format, um, you have to provide opt-in for use. Uh, cus customers have to be given their chance to opt-in much earlier in the process. And unless browsers manage to sort this out for us and take it away, then um, you need a solution that's going to help do that in a very graceful way. And for users to have that choice, otherwise um, you'll be outside of the guidelines of the uh, privacy law. So a container tag helps you do that very easy. Something like um, Tagman can obviously support you in um, being able to switch that off once for all customers uh, right at the beginning of the journey. So it's a very simple way to implement what the privacy law is saying at the moment. If you have got to offer the customer options for all of those different tags, um, I can't even start to think how you'd implement it. Good luck. Um, um, is there any question from the audience for Alison? I'll run as quickly as I can. If you just say who you are, please. Yeah, my name is Brian Donnelly of FCM Travel Solutions, so we're TMC. I'm very interested that you've obviously focused on B2C. Mm -hmm. um, have you looked at B2B at all yet? Because obviously your product cuts across uh, mm -hmm. both spectrums like, like we do. Yeah, we've had um, some initial conversations on B2B. Um, primarily, we've seen it as a secondary focus uh, from our planning perspective because the, the bigger prize is... is direct obviously in that kind of scenario but we can see you know and I just I'm really excited about getting involved in that because LinkedIn is like your 24-hour online cocktail party uh, and you know there's introductions galore just waiting in there uh, you, you know it's got to the point now where you know if you, if you have got 500 connections or more you don't even realize who you connected to so the opportunity is vast and you know it's certainly an area that we'll be looking at over the next 12 months I'd say. Any other questions? Okay, um, thanks Alison. Um, if we can now hand over to uh, Justin. He's gonna look at it more from the digital agency perspective. So, um, you know, what his clients are looking for, how um, the digital element will fit into that w wider scheme of things, I'm, I'm sure it'll be very compelling. How long have I got, by the way? No time. Five, ten minutes. Okay, cool. um, so I'll talk about a few things that we're doing um, to try and perhaps get you interested, spark, spark off a few ideas. Um, the first one is in B2B, so good. good. Thanks for that question earlier. Um, LinkedIn um, we found to be um, very, very useful, um, very, very good in terms of ROI when you're looking to find the people that are hard to reach. Um, American Express, we've uh, run a European-wide um, LinkedIn campaign to target um, those that procure um, travel. So that's really kind of CFOs, um, the assistance to CFOs, um, procurement, that type of thing. So, you know, you can do the same sort of targeting that you can do on Facebook with LinkedIn. So um, it means you can kind of, you know, um, really zero in on those that you want to reach. And the other thing with LinkedIn that I really like is that They've developed various kind of tools and products that um, very much fit into the entire kind of marketing kind of journey. Um, so the other thing that we're doing a lot more of now is kind of really mixing up the real world with the digital world. So perhaps when you're running an event, event for example, you can you can kind of then run kind of all of your sort of event kind of um, pre kind of marketing activity, you know, through LinkedIn. You can even create a kind of an event on LinkedIn. And then you can kind of continue the conversation within LinkedIn, LinkedIn, you know, after the event as well. So, the idea of integrating kind of events um, into social media is something that we found to be um, very, very successful, especially when you're kind of looking to to kind of reach um, the B2B kind of market. So there's there's B2B, and that's primarily kind of acquisition focused stuff. The other thing that's really nice about LinkedIn is that you can also you can you can run polls on LinkedIn, so you can ask a question. Um, that you want to know the answer to. And when you get the answer to that question, it gets added to that user's LinkedIn profile. So you start to kind of know more about those people. Then you can kind of then target again based on you know, the answers that they've given you on the polls that you've run. Um, the other thing I thought I'd talk about is kind of how mobile and social is starting to kind of you know, get more mashed up. A um, couple, of, couple of kind of um, examples of, of stuff going on there. So, you know, 
You've got obviously, um, you know, uh, folks like Facebook and, and Foursquare who are now offering um, the ability for you to kind of um, check in um, to, a, to a destination and then you can start then obviously then building out kind of social um, marketing and social activity around the fact that someone's checked in to a, to a destination. American Express again have, have, have joined up with, with Facebook and Foursquare to allow you to um, redeem vouchers and get credits back on your statement if you uh, check in to a, an, an American Express merchant. Um, they run, um, they're running, a, I think it's called a Small Business Saturday um, event coming up towards the end of this year where they'll give you uh, a $25 credit um, to spend on folks that you then check in to on Foursquare or Facebook. So to, in order for you to do that, you have to sync up your, your credit card with either Facebook or with Foursquare. So you can start to see how we're not just talking anymore about social and mobile, but we're also starting to talk about commerce as well. And obviously all of these guys now are starting to kind of try and fight for that, that sort of social, mobile and, and commercial kind of space. So I think that's going to be a really interesting kind of one to watch when we, when we move more and more towards that sort of you know, the mobile being effectively your, your wallet, which is kind of already here. Um, the other thing I thought I'd talk about was um, just integration. I know it's been the theme already. Um, probably of today and and all week and and certainly was um, for the previous two speakers. I think it's it's really key. Again, uh, one of the recent um, above the line campaigns um, that was run by Europe Car. Um, they hadn't advertised on telly ever. I think in the UK, um, it was a big deal for those for, for them. Um, it was all about um, trying to decommoditize car rental. I guess. And um, so what we made sure of was that the the campaign was a. Gu it was all about um, their free deliver service, which effectively um, allows you to spend an extra hour, the time that you would have gone to pick up the car, you know, um, or drop it off, doing something differently. And there's basically kind of um, a guy dancing around in his pants, I think, um, in his house um, to, to some music track. So it was a very easy thing for us to just basically kind of place and seed across all of Europe Car's different um, social media channels, YouTube, um, Flickr, et cetera, et cetera. And again, that just either was the first point at which uh, folks um, engaged with Europe Car or engaged with a campaign. And they then went on, um, or certainly 20, we saw a 24% um, uplift in um, res uh, rentals from the social media channels that we were, that we were marketing on. Um, the other thing I thought I'd touch on very briefly was commerce. Um, so really building on the, the mobile commerce side of things, again, a very easy thing to do, relatively speaking, is to start looking at how you can integrate um, commerce into your, your social media channel. So we've, we've done that for small luxury hotels as the world. So you can, you can book a hotel from the SLH Facebook site. Um, and finally, I thought I'd just talk about content. And I think this is um, a really interesting sort of area, I think, because obviously, you know, huge amounts of content is now um, being created outside of our control. Um, and uh, that could be a good thing. Um, and um, and, and we really, really need to start thinking about how we can start harnessing that content. And one of the, the projects that we've, we launched um, a few months ago um, was for an online travel agent, eBookers. They wanted to try and do something really, really different with, with social media. They wanted to do that in mobile. And so what we came up with was a social media travel guide. So effectively what you do is you, you download the app, it's free, and you're able to type in a destination, somewhere that you're thinking about going to. So it very much kind of goes back to the whole inspiration side of things, you know, that inspiration stage of the whole kind of booking process. You type in your destination and you might type in an activity that you want to do. You might want to go to New York, you might want to go shopping. And what the app does is it goes out to all of the different social media platforms and it grabs the most recent or the most popular content from um, the, the, the query that you've made and brings it back to your app and then displays it to you in a lovely kind of magazine format. So very much, if, any, if anyone's familiar with Flipboard, it's effectively Flipboard for travel. So you end up getting a real-time dynamic, social, socially, socially kind of generated um, destination experience um, in, on, your, on, your, on your tablet device. It's been really, really successful. We've had um, we've blown, blown the kind of uh, the, the objectives out of the water in terms of numbers of downloads and reach. What it also does at the same time is it also then pulls out um, from the eBookers um, booking engine API the relevant hotel content for that destination and that activity. So people who like New York shopping are tend to stay more are more likely to stay at the Plaza than those that go to New York and and go to look at sightseeing. 
And so you also have the hotel content placed um, within, your, within your magazine too. And again, I think that's, that's really interesting in terms of how you as destinations or as brands can start actually harnessing and using socially, socially generated content for your own benefit and purpose, which ultimately benefits your users. Thanks. Thanks, Justin. I just wanted to ask you, you know, you mentioned a few of your clients there. Do you find that they're coming to you and asking you for integrated campaigns or particularly social media or digital campaigns? I think, I mean, I think, I think, Alice, I think Alison was right in that some, some people are, are really, uh, you know, going gusto when it comes to social. Some, some folks are just testing the water and I don't think it really matters kind of where you are. But I think social media has been around long enough now for all there to be to some degree, some established ways of doing things. And I think that, um, that you know, by default, it's just part of what you do um, in, in these um, challenging economic times as well. You know, the more you can kind of, the more media you can earn through assets that you're creating elsewhere, um, the, the, the better. So again, there are, there are, there are economic reasons to, to make it sort of there by default. Um, and I think the other thing is that, you know, you have to look at it um, in two in two ways. One is that you have the the general operation side of social media. So you know whether it's um, you know kind of um, customer service type activity, and you, so you map all of the stuff that your business does anyway, just a function, and you map where social fits into that. And then you have a separate kind of layer or a separate strand or whatever that's really about the marketing and the campaign side of what you do. So you know by default you should be doing the stuff that you do anyway. And just include social in, into that into that way of doing things, and then you know include what you'll be doing in marketing in social in the same way. And I, I feel I should ask you the same question I asked the other two as well. How do your clients judge uh, your success? Um, I think I think obviously you know if you can if you can attribute um, kind of where you know a sale came from, so a hotel booking obviously you know or uh, the rental of a car you know clearly um, you know then then it's it's a relatively easy way of, of measuring the, the success when you're when you're perhaps more focused around trying to drive awareness um, and um, and um, uh, you know it's it's slightly 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 harder to to kind of um, measure. Um, I think I think we you know I think I think we are in a in a, a, a you know a, an evolutionary kind of phase of how we measure and what metrics we set for social media. I don't think anyone has necessarily the, the, the kind of the answer, but I think you always have to go back down to, you know, the way that you measure the rest of your activity. So don't try not to measure it in any other way than you would if you were sticking an advert in the Times, for example, you know. Thanks for that plug there. <laughs> I work for the Times, uh, if uh, anyone doesn't know that. So um, are there any questions from the audience? Uh, well, in that case, I'd just like to say thank you to our three uh, great panellists today. Um, Alison Whiteman from Virgin Atlantic, Brian Hart from Tourism Island, and Justin Cook from Fortune Cookie. Thanks again.